You know, if I've made one thing abundantly clear on this YouTube channel, and especially over on my Twitch channel over the past couple months, it's that my feelings about the movie Detective Pikachu are complicated. It's now been almost a month since I saw the movie, and I'm still sorting out my exact thoughts on it, but there's one thing that I don't feel complicated about at all, and that is Shiwagao Pikachu. Now, if you don't know the term Shiwagao Pikachu, there's a really good chance you might know the face attached to it. Shiwagao Pikachu is the Japanese term for this wrinkly-faced Pikachu, which became a minor internet sensation when the very first Detective Pikachu trailer dropped. And as best as I can tell, here's what went down. Basically, Japanese Twitter users noticed that if you pause the Detective Pikachu trailer at exactly the right time in a couple spots, you could catch Detective Pikachu making some particularly odd, seemingly almost anguished facial expressions, which, of course, led to a tidal wave of fan art, pixel art, latte art, salad art, just every type of art that a person can make, people have made. Now let's break the term down really quick. The Japanese word gao, when used as a suffix, means face. So you might have heard the word before in terms like hen gao or doya gao or ahe gao, but in this specific case, shiwa gao basically means wrinkly face, hence shiwa gao pikachu, sometimes also referred to as shiwa shiwa pikachu, or even just shiwachu for short, which I really like. Now depending on how you looked at it, the emergence of this wrinkly Pikachu meme was not, strictly speaking, a positive thing for Detective Pikachu. I mean, in essence, this meme really did just consist of a lot of people making fun of some particularly uncanny looking frames in an already very uncanny looking movie. Now, the real explosion of this meme took place back in March, and it even got a good deal of attention from the English-speaking internet at the time. But the reason I'm talking about this now is because a couple weeks ago, something else happened that I don't think many people in the West are aware of. In the middle of May, just a few days after Detective Pikachu came out internationally, the official Japanese Detective Pikachu account posted a tweet announcing a brand new promotion. Beginning on May 24th, if you took your Detective Pikachu ticket stub and showed up at any of the 11 Pokemon Center stores located in Japan, you would be rewarded with an exclusive, official, limited edition, wrinkly face Pikachu sticker. Now this entire promotion immediately fascinated me. The tweet in question from that Japanese Detective Pikachu Twitter account began with Shiwashiwa Gao ga ninki dato, meaning, huh, the wrinkly face is popular, followed by a thinking face emoji. Essentially, what they're doing with this campaign is taking an aspect of their movie that was lovingly mocked on a global scale by fans, and they've deployed a plan to spin it into an actual part of their promotion for the movie. It's an uncharacteristically shrewd and clever move from the Pokemon company or whoever's idea this was, and it's also really well executed. 99 times out of 100, watching a movie studio try to take an accidental meme from their movie's trailer and turn it into merch would be a really kind of cringy and painful thing to watch, but for some reason, this feels different to me. Like, I think the crappy version of this would have been uh, if they'd done sort of their own fan art, like their own official art of Wrinkly Pikachu and gave out stickers of that exaggerated face just to show how in on the joke they were, like that would feel kind of try hardy to me, but for some reason to me, and maybe this is more nuanced than this subject matter deserves, but to me the fact that they just took the actual initial screen grabs from the movie that kicked off the Wrinkly Pikachu meme and cropped those into stickers, I don't, that just feels perfect to me. I, I unabashedly love this promotion. Now, the obvious bad news here is that this promotion was exclusive to Japan. Somewhat irritatingly, the official American Twitter account for Detective Pikachu, which I think it's fair to say I personally have had a somewhat combative relationship with from time to time, has not acknowledged Shiwagao Pikachu a single time, and what's worse, North American Pokemon centers just straight up don't exist, so this promotion has no parallel in the West. Now this meant that if I wanted a Shiwagao Pikachu sticker, I really only had one option, so I booked a plane ticket and got on a flight to Tokyo in search of answers. So, I'm outside of Toho Cinemas in Shibuya, and I'm going to attempt to just get a ticket stub for Detective Pikachu, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Now, step one of this plan was to get my hands on a Detective Pikachu ticket stub, which in theory would be easy, except I already saw the movie in America and I did not want to see it again. Um, Toho Cinemas in Shibuya was showing the movie multiple times a day, both dubbed and subbed, but I, I tried to figure out if there was some way I could do this without just buying a ticket. So my initial idea was to just post up outside the theater and ask people leaving if they saw Detective Pikachu and if I could have, or maybe even buy their ticket stubs off them. But 
a Japanese friend assured me that that was not <laughs> actually a great idea and probably wouldn't even be a particularly effective idea. So, idea number two, and I'm not super proud of this one, was a little bit trashier. It was a lot trashier. Idea number two was to go through the trash at the movie theater. Now, this might seem like an insane idea. The odds of finding a specific ticket stub for a specific movie in a movie theater trash can does, on paper, seem pretty low, but once you understand the layout of Toho Cinemas, it starts to seem a lot more reasonable. See, because this Toho location is located in downtown Shibuya, um, it's an incredibly skinny and kind of vertical theater, which means that its six different screens are actually divided across four separate floors, with two movies alternating back and forth on most of the screens. So, for this reason, I believed that maybe if I were to head to the specific floor Detective Pikachu was showing on, and dig through the trash at the precise right time, I would stumble upon a veritable treasure trove of Detective Pikachu ticket stubs. So I walked into the theater, figured out exactly what floor Detective Pikachu was showing on. It was the seventh floor, it turns out. And then during the screening of some horror movie, I made my way up the elevator and began my hunt. Um, the elevator doors opened up and I am greeted by this totally empty concession area that is manned by one employee who I guess is just there to give his full undivided attention to the only two screens on the seventh floor of Toho Cinemas. Now upon seeing that there's a person on this floor with me, I immediately put on my best kind of confused foreigner, uh, scrunched up eyebrows expression, kind of stumbling around, pretending like I'm looking for where you buy the tickets. Uh, and then when the employee's back is turned, I strike. I begin rifling through the garbage like some sort of gamer raccoon. Eagerly, I peek my head over the lid of the first trash can and nothing. There is an empty bucket, a empty boba cup, a receipt for another movie entirely, and exactly five kernels of popcorn waiting for me. Devastating. Now, there are two trash cans on this floor, so I slide over to trash can number two, and while it does yield slightly more substance, it is 100% food packaging, not a single shred of ticket stub paper to be found anywhere in the can. In a moment of true desperation, I even tried, and I'm not thrilled to admit this, the bathroom trash can, which it turns out was just full of paper towels, so three strikes. Three strikes in a row. No luck in any of the trash cans. I didn't get this one. Anyways, I wash my hands and I head back downstairs. Although real quick and really, really quick sidebar here. I noticed it turns out in Tokyo you can get a soda and a popcorn at a Japanese movie theater for 500 yen. Like, that's like four and a half dollars for a popcorn and a coke at a movie theater. And this isn't like rural Japan or anything, it's the opposite. This is Shibuya, like seconds from the classic Shibuya scramble. It's the, the absolute downtowniest downtown part of Tokyo. For comparison's sake, when I saw Detective Pikachu back home in California, you know what my popcorn and soda cost me? It was $14.59. Anyways, <laughs> defeated, I, I head back downstairs and sort of come to terms with the fact that my freebooting plan had failed and that I only had one option left and that was to just straight up buy a ticket. See, that looks tight. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> never mind. So I walk up to the ticket vending machine and begin the process of selecting my seat. And with no actual plans to see this movie a second time, uh, I, I decided to be kind of a good Samaritan here, so I selected a seat near the back of the theater right next to two seats that were already taken, with my logic being that by buying this ticket and then not using it, I'm providing these two people a one-seat buffer between them and anyone else who might sit too close to them and ruin their theater-going experience. Anyways, the ticket comes to a grand total of 1,900 yen, which is like 18 bucks, basically, and it, this is when it starts to feel like maybe this amount of money is not actually worth it for a one inch sticker. But I push through that feeling, buy my tickets, they print out, and I walk out of the theater uh, and into the Krispy Kreme that is attached to the Toho Cinemas to compose myself briefly. And real quickly, because I don't know what else to do with it, here is a 15 second review of the extremely fancy Japanese Krispy Kreme donut I got. It's like a strong ginger taste, which I'm excited about. Not that sweet. That's my review. A little smile. Mm -hmm. I got my ticket stub. I just have to go to the Pokemon Center and hope they're not out because this promotion has been—it's like a, from last month. So 
I searched Twitter. I saw some people posting the stickers like 12 hours ago in Japan. I was looking at the Japanese hashtag for wrinkled Pikachu, and I saw people posting it, so. I'm optimistic, but we'll see. Now, well in advance of executing this plan, I had actually set my sights on a specific Pokemon store, the Pokemon Center Tokyo DX, which is a brand new Pokemon Center that opened its doors last year and immediately stole the title of largest Pokemon Center in the world. The fact that this was the largest Pokemon Center upon opening was a fact that I hoped would translate into a higher allotment of Shiwachu stickers, heightening my odds of actually getting one. Coincidentally, this Pokemon Center also happened to be just a short seven minute drive from my personal mecca, the Domino's Pizza Japan headquarters, a fact that turned out to be somewhat relevant in a video I uploaded on Tuesday of this week. Here's a link if you want to check that out. See, I'm getting a little more efficient with my Japan trips. Multiple birds with one stone here. With my completely unused Detective Pikachu ticket stub in hand, I met up with a Japanese friend of mine and we made our way into the gigantic Nihonbashi Takayashi Maya shopping center, hoping and praying that they might still have some of those precious wrinkly face stickers left. And as we wove a path through countless boutique fashion shops, riding escalator after escalator through this enormous 10 story mini mall, it began to dawn on me that I actually had no guarantee that any of this was gonna pay off in the end. I mean, once again, the Shiwagao Pikachu promotion kicked off back in May and interest in Detective Pikachu was at its highest point then and had begun to wane now. So I, I had no evidence that either the tickets hadn't all been snapped up initially, it was sort of a limited time uh, while supplies last offer, uh, or if they were even still had the promotion going. There was no end date listed in that tweet. So I began to begrudgingly grapple with the possibility that I had wasted thousands of yen on a movie ticket and tens of thousands of yen on a plane ticket uh, for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Now before that anxiety could totally take hold, we arrived at the Pokemon Center and immediately all those negative feelings I had about the sticker situation were washed away and just replaced with awe. Big Mewtwo? The place was this beautiful, spotless, sparkling white zone, looking almost as if someone had polished it with diaper pure every morning, noon, and night. It looked almost like what you would imagine a Pokemon Center to look like in real life, just this white floors, white ceilings, white walls, and just beyond the entrance, a massive life-size Snorlax statue, which while circling it, I noticed had actually been autographed on the lower back corner by original Pokemon illustrator and designer, Ken Sugimori. Right away, it was, it was clear what the DX in Pokemon Center Tokyo DX stands for. It is a truly deluxe Pokemon shopping experience. Behind the Snorlax was a wall with the silhouette of every single Pokemon to date embossed into it. And like any childhood Pokemon fan, my instinct was to immediately hunt down my personal favorite Pokemon, Doug Trio. But the main thing that drew my friend and I in upon walking into this place was actually this, this huge wall detailing the entire history of the Pokemon series. Oh yeah. yeah. Pikachu. Yellow? Yellow, yellow version. Japanese Pikachu. Oh, Pikachu version? Pikachu version. Captivated by this physical timeline of this monumental series, we kept sort of strafing alongside the wall reading it, uh, not totally aware of our surroundings, and that was when we heard this voice. Hello. Oh, birthday? Is your birthday? Uh, no. no. So, now, I told her, no, neither of us have June birthdays, but uh, I reached into my bag to pull out my ticket stub, and here's what went down. Oh, you, you know about the sticker thing? I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Can I? Yes, please, yeah. Here Oh, thank you so much. Oh, uh, good. Yeah, very cute Pikachu. Yeah, very cute Pikachu. Here you are. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. This is why I came here. Mission accomplished. So cute. I did it. This is my this is my most prized possession of my Japan trip. <laughs> oh, awesome. The mission was a total success, and I'm sure you can tell from this footage, I was overjoyed to finally have my hands on this sticker. Of course, we did a little more shopping at Pokemon Center Tokyo DX. We walked around and looked at a lot of the new stuff. I don't know. I don't Robotnik. know. Robotnik. Mm -hmm. Dr. Eggman. Lobo, Lobo Pikachu. 
Robo Pikachu. No, I'm not expensive. familiar. Oh my god, look at these Metamon socks. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's flexing and finessing. There's also a relatively new line of merch called Pokemon Fit, which if you don't know what that is, they're these little stuffed animals uh, that are able to sit upright on, on a flat surface for every single one of the original 151 Pokemon. <laughs> I might have to cop this from Weepin' Bell. Tragically, they were sold out of Dugtrio, my, my favorite, so I settled on three weird Pokemon that I was just happy to see realized in plush form. I got a Magikarp, a Weepin' Bell, and an Exeg Cute. I think, I think for Exeg Cute, I just enjoyed the idea that someone somewhere on Earth had to solve the insane engineering problem of figuring out how to turn a Pokemon that is literally just six eggs into a stuffed animal. Um, I just admire that, the craftsmanship that went into that problem. Oh, and I also really enjoyed my friend uh, reminding me of one of my favorite Pokemon piece of trivia, the Japanese name of Magmar. What's the name? Booba. Bo <laughs> Boober. Booba. Does it say that somewhere on there? I don't know. Just the Pokemon Center in general just kind of rules. There's so I could have shopped in there for literally hours without getting bored. Um, but at the end of the day, all the Pokemon merchandise on Earth could not hold a candle to my most prized possession. My tiny, rare, perfect, hideous... Shiwagao Pikachu sticker. All right, so that is the story of how I obtained, I've actually got it right here, this sticker. I still haven't figured out what to put it on. I, it's too precious to me. I don't know what's going to be in my life long enough that would justify using this on it. If you have an idea, please let me know because I can't think of anything. A uh, couple things before I go. Number one, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that already. It's obvious and boring, I know, but I had to get out of the way. And thing number two, I took a lot of shorter, smaller videos on my most recent trip to Japan that are never going to show up on this YouTube channel that are all on my Instagram in a highlight. So you can watch those uh, by going to Instagram.com slash The Babylonian. Uh, and following me there, there's like a highlight at the top. Or if you don't use Instagram, uh, there's a web link that you can use to watch all that content. So I've got a link to that in the description. It just seems like it would be worthwhile for me to try to get more than 2% of my YouTube following onto my Instagram page. So that exists. Um, other than that, thank you to my Patreon backers for helping fund me doing really stupid, frivolous stuff like this video. Um, and yeah. So yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys this upcoming week with a bunch of E3 adjacent content. So look forward to that and I'll see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Didn't sound right. Weird way to end it. <laughs>